Mille, thanks for joining us, mate. Long time between drinks. Um, I think the last time I spoke to you was when at your house. Yeah, it was. Yeah. I just, uh, I think just before I stopped playing for the I think it was, yeah. yeah. Yeah, around then. I remember it. I had all the photos up in my, in my house, didn't you? You did. Yeah. We had a little stroll and yeah, we did. chat. It was good. Um, you were going into coaching and you've been coaching in the academy at Villa and then all of a sudden you end up at Spurs. How did it all come about? So I think the best place to start is obviously, as you know, as you mentioned, sort of done some coaching and was doing some coaching at Villa and in various capacities, um, had a vast array of experiences and, and stuff that I'm you know, really, really grateful I've actually had the opportunity to do stuff with, with the loans and coaching players through a computer and not necessarily always on the pitch. So again, learning a different dynamic, but just seeing the value in it. And then I think obviously the, the connection and having the relationship, I, staying in touch with Ange, being up there and seeing him um, a few times up the road in Celtic and, and picking his brain on a few things and him providing me with some some great advice and, and sort of support in that way and, and sort of he always knew what my intentions were and um, I guess when the opportunity came around we we had a conversation and you know part of that was would would you consider coming and working with me here and for me it was a you know it was almost a no-brainer in terms of yeah I want to go and learn and continue to develop and uh, I wanted to do it in the first time. I think uh, in a first team environment, I, was, I think I was ready to, for, for that next uh, step in, in, in the coaching journey. And uh, when it did come about, I was, I was all too sort of eager to jump at that. How long did it take you to make that decision? Oh, it was a phone call. And I think by the end of the phone call before I could hang up, it was like, yeah, like this, is, this is something that I want to do. Uh, did you have constant con uh, sort of uh, continuous communication with Ange throughout the period of time since he left the national team and then yeah well, I think I think I think it was I think there was obviously a period um, you know we text each other especially when he was in Japan and just as you know wish him all the best and I think in those key the milestones when you go and win things it's always a, a congratul congratulatory sort of message and um, it wasn't until sort of the back end of the first season at Celtic where I did get the chance to go up but um, again it was it was it was it was a you know a great sort of it was nice sort of seeing I think it was it had been like four or five years it, the time just went and then you see each other again on the other side of the world and it's uh, you know you can then sort of sit down properly and, and speak about what it's been like and you know from playing and also myself with on the journey of sort of coaching and and doing it that way and uh, yeah, he's been all too sort of helpful with that and uh, you know now it's taken you know now we're in now we're in this sort of environment now and it's again it's it's, it's how I expected it to be it's it's uh, very much foot to the floor challenging and, and sort of testing and where can we gain advantages in, in every aspect so you played under him when he was captain of the national team so when you went to Celtic to watch those training sessions, what did you take away from it? Was there anything that stood out for you that you maybe didn't see beforehand? I guess, I guess when I went, I guess a lot of the things when I went there, I think seeing the, probably just getting a gauge of what the staff and and how the, the atmosphere was like. Obviously, they they were just I think it was the they were receiving the trophy the first time they won the league, so you can imagine that the atmosphere was was great. But I guess just getting a sense of that, what it was like, and and the training sessions were, I think that was a, it might have been a minus one, and then obviously the game, which you, there's not there's not huge variations in that sense, but I guess it was just seeing what the dynamic was with that and uh, getting a feel for the place and uh, in terms of their, how they how they had responded to him, it was no surprise, but again they it was done in a very similar way in terms I guess from the national team perspective, it's done in such a small small dose getting a reflection of probably what it's like day to day is very it's not it's not straightforward um, but I've seen enough in the in the couple of days I spent there particularly in that moment where you're like okay yeah he's obviously got it to where he wants it to be and there's obviously a lot of uh, you know they're all in on it which which is what you sort of need how are you settling in here at Spurs um listen it's it's an ever it's an ever evolving process I think settling in is do you call it settling in? I think it's just getting to work. Um, 
I think everyone's made myself feel welcome from the start and allowed us to sort of just get on with it. Um, it's been nice to see so many different people, different facets of what the organisation has and, and the football club and just also, but also just embracing that, but, um, you know, getting on with what, what needs to happen and which is trying to get this uh, football club to where we want to try and get it to on the football pitch. What's your primary role day to day? Primary role day to day, again, with with our coaching department, we've got there's four or five of us. We're all we're all doing bits on the pitch, um, pretty much every, every day. That's what we're encouraged to do, and that's the way that the sessions are normally designed, which is which is nice. You always you always feel like you're involved and active, and then um, part of the responsibility with that is working with different individuals, units, and they've got an emphasis on set play uh, defensively as well. Is, is is something that I sort of I've got a responsibility for which I'm enjoying also. Like I mentioned before, you played under Ange. You've watched him from afar. You've gone there and seen him at Celtic. What's it actually like now to work under him or with him? Well, you are under him, but yeah, working with him. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think uh, I just, like I said to you, I think the, the environment um, that we as as coaches and I think the demands that we get put under, it's, it's always constructive feedback for us, but how are we going to continue to improve not only ourselves, but um, you know the group along the way and that's uh, for me that's healthy um, you know you never want to sort of stand still it, it's always about that next what, what what can we do next to improve and you know if, if uh, that doesn't mean you go and do it in at lightning speed it's just right it might be a small thing every single day are we going to get better are we going to get better are we going to keep challenging ourselves and, and, and the group to, to continue to respond in, in a positive way that's going to get the best out of them and we live it and breathe it I live it and breathe it every single day now and uh, like I said it's been done in a way that's that's uh, again it's challenging but again you get used to it and you uh, you continue to you continue to keep pushing is that more difficult than playing um I think the demands physically playing is is obviously we know and I guess f from watching us you can see that it's not <laughs> it, we are one of the you know we we do work very very hard but again when you get can see the rewards of that um, albeit at the weekend and seeing what the outcome of games football games are and particularly you can see what's been worked on and how that's come out in terms of the lads efforts but again it 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 it's it's we do the stuff probably behind the scenes a little bit more, a little bit longer hours, but again, probably not as physically demanding in that respect. I was at the, uh, the Chelsea game, um, obviously, you know, high line, two players sent off. Firstly, that is Ange, right? Sticking to his principles and wanting to play. And I think I asked him earlier on about the question about, uh, was he impressed, happy? Did it make him probably proud, the fact that the players, even with nine men, stuck to the philosophy? and. Clearly, the players have really bought into it. Yeah, I think uh, I think that's probably one of the games where you look back on it, and I know the outcome was, you know, not what we wanted, and, and you don't want to concede four goals against any any opposition um, when you put some context to it. And like you mentioned, it's it's very easy. Probably, I know you we've been there, and you, it's very easy to just and we've we've probably played under those. We've probably played where. You try and it's damage limitation, but um, well, that's natural, isn't it? That's normal. Th that's a normal. That's a normal way of, of looking at it. However, if there are other solutions to that, you know, it doesn't. That, that doesn't necessarily mean it's got to be so super defensive. It can be. It can be the other way. Um, perhaps that was an extreme of that. But again, what you want to see is the commitment to it, and, and I mean, no one can question that. I, I guess the lads have uh, they absolutely took the information on board. And they went with it and they stuck to it all the way. What was Andrew's first comment after the game in the dressing room? After that game? Do I remember it all? Um, I think from... I don't know the exact... It must have been around probably how, how they went about it, particularly after going against the adversity. But I think for me, from memory as well, there would have been something in around discipline. Um, again, and, and not allowing, not allowing ourselves to lose sight of what we're trying to do. And again, it's very, very much. It only takes a split second, and that's what happened. It was a couple of incidences in the game where 
we, you know, we we had the, we had the we didn't get the rub of the green, and we we ended up making decisions that were that ended up costing us in, from a, from a team's perspective, and, and that's something that we've been really really good at um, up until that point, and, and unfortunately we on the back end of it, we were on the other side of it that game. Um, you've been known to be sitting up in the stands watching the games. Do you still do that? Is that what you do on match day? Stay up in the stands and watch the games from from that above and give that yeah. continuous communication. Partly because there's no room on the bench, <laughs> um, but no. Listen, it's uh, I'm, I'm up there with the analysts and we're looking at it, particularly from the first half, just seeing um, how it's developing. What are what are what are any solutions, particularly, but also just providing whatever the images are going to be at half time potentially and, and having a sort of two-way conversation with, with with one of the coaches on the bench with that and again it's a collective thing it's it's not you know it's it's how can we how can we then affect it at half time if we get the opportunity to do so and uh, there are moments obviously we we do have some stuff for the team but then can you get any extra bits for individuals and, and that's something that we try and uh, you know try and make the the time as productive as it can possibly be do you train with the team at all during the week sometimes like you know small sided games do i had you... a join in today to be fair um we had just a just part of the part of one of the sessions it was just a, as a bounce player but um yeah very sporadically nothing we we tend to do it with with all the players we get we get as many of the boys involved and and, and the young boys come up and, and and join in on that um where you are so probably a little bit more involved is if you if you're doing some unit work and in smaller groups you tend to be a little bit more active um, but yeah, that, that's fine the team stuff as a as a whole or if you're in bigger groups and usually you've got players to cover that which is fine but they know i'm always ready if needed so all good always limbered and stretched <laughs> on the sideline ready to go in um you, you guys have had a, had a fantastic start to the season obviously the the, uh, the chelsea game was a setback in terms of the way that happened and the injuries was probably the biggest blow that you suffered and of course last game losing uh, way to wolves but the injuries and and how you respond to that because there's some key players you're missing for some time as well yeah and that's something that we i guess across the season every team has to deal with um i don't know i don't think there's ever been a season where people have got it completely spot on where they haven't had setbacks um what it does to do is it provides opportunities for for individuals um, to step up and and that's what we're that's what we're definitely looking at. And so far, some of them have stepped up, which is which is which has been positive. Um, but that'll continue. That you know that's going to need to remain. And you know we are going to be missing some of those key components of w what's what we've already had. But again, our, our our job is to is to keep pushing the ones that that we've got available to us and keep showing them that you know they they can provide the solutions we need. This weekend, Aston Villa against your old team. How impressed have you been with how they've sort of transformed, how you know Emery's been doing his job? Ah, oh, fantastic job. Um, it goes without, yeah, I think everyone's, everyone's, it's nice to see that everyone can see it and everyone's, because uh, I know exactly how hard they work every single day. Um, the manager's fantastic. He's, uh, you know, he's, just transformed the way that he wants that football club to play and what is what is pleasing is that the lads have just you know they've taken it all on board and that's the biggest thing is you can see that they're enjoying their football um and that's again uh, anyone who anyone who's played it <laughs> if, if you're enjoying your football it makes anyone's job a hell of a lot easier and and you can see that that's what they've you know that's what they're currently doing and they'll continue to do under him how good a manager is he yeah, listen. From my experiences in and around that environment, I've you know I think he's he's great. I think he's uh, he's excellent. He's obviously had a he's got a fantastic success wherever he's gone um, in terms of winning things and, and particularly in European competitions. But he knows exactly what he wants, how he wants it to be done, and, and he knows the process in in order to get players there. And uh, that's you know as a player, he makes it clear for them and. and like anything, he's, he, he sticks to that, and, and that's what—that's obviously ultimately what's got him success, and will continue to get him success. Your long-term ambition—is it management one day? Is it something that you would like to step up to one day? You always want to ask me that question. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, listen. There's, I think you know, I'm not going to—I'm not going to sort of shy away from that. I don't think I think that's that's something that I'm going to 
aspire to do absolutely it's something that i aspire to do but again you talk about settling in like you've got to get your foot your feet in the <laughs> ground and no but yeah absolutely i've got no i don't shy away from that that's something that i do want to do but again it's a it's a it's a step-by-step -step process and i'm uh i'm currently learning under some really good obviously Ange being at the top of that but then i'm working with in a real good coaching team and learning and, and trying to improve every single day and hopefully I'm, I'm bringing something to that as well and, and, and the lads are learning a little bit off me as well but um, like I said that's, that, that can happen in time. Big news out of Australia, national second tier. Um, what's your thoughts on it? Sydney yeah. United, Marconi on the, bet, the second biggest platform, I spoke to Ange about it, he was, he was buzzing about the fact that it's going to be Marconi against South Melbourne again. Is it confirmed? Yeah. Well yeah, they're the teams there. Yeah, well, yeah there's some it, of the team that are if in. it's if it's I mean if it's that I think it's been it's probably been a, a long time coming I mean there's some names you know RPL Leichhardt South Melbourne Sydney United Mark Kenny Stallions Preston Lions Wollongong Wolves Sydney Olympic yeah they're massive clubs in the history of our game right and that's the I guess with a real fan base as well and, and it's clubs that have continued to still thrive in the MPL and stuff like that so I guess to see them probably get the recognition now and given the opportunity maybe to keep you know pushing and maybe the necessary funding that'll help support that I, I guess for me it's it's again it's something to get excited about because again I've got an affiliation with one of those clubs but I played against all those clubs as well so it's a it's a reminder of the recognition that probably some of these clubs deserve because they they did ultimately you know I don't have to tell you that they, they, these were the guys that were producing our Socceroos long before any of you know and that's and they did it for a very very long time so there's still some people that work for those clubs that'll, that'll still have that affiliation and, and will still want to keep trying to strive for that if they get the opportunity now to do that with sort of extra funding and a platform the right platform then uh, I think it can only mean positive things for the game How big were City United in your development as a footballer? They were, they were arguably one of the biggest. Um, you know, in, in terms of the club itself, absolutely, it'd be it'd be the biggest. Um, there's no doubt about that. I, I think purely because I was I came through there. I, you know, was in the first team environment very young. So again, you're around those first team players, the senior pros, even the coaches, and you're learning your trade through through them. Um, that was my first taste of it. But again, being a supporter of the club i got to see players during that time there and and watching the likes of you know the lo the likes of you know your tony popovich's your ante milicic's that went through and, and and played for the national team and, and went on to go and do um great things and it gave me the ambition to want to try and do that and if i stayed at sydney united i'd get looked at or i'd get an opportunity and maybe go overseas one day so it's always got a like i said it's always a always allowed me that platform to go ultimately I had to go and I had to leave to get an, probably the next step but um, yeah it doesn't I, I never underestimate it that's for sure what was your favorite game for City United like who, who was the team you came up against that you just went oh I can't wait for that game oh Marconi's obviously a derby it's because yeah. it's a derby isn't you it you see the lights on right you it's just look across derby. and go yeah City United right playing tonight so I played a couple of them in the I played a few I don't know if I played in the NSL I might have played one but I played a couple in the MPL and even they were like real tasty and I enjoyed I enjoyed them um, again your Olympics again not good memories because <laughs> we, <laughs> we weren't we, we didn't we didn't fare too well against them but any anyone like I said i those clubs with the tradition, you always had the, you know, you always, you, there was always something, like you, you always remember a game maybe when you were growing up and you thought, oh, we're playing these today, oh, I'm playing at Hindmarsh today, I've got to go to Adelaide City and play against them. And just those, again, from, for me, those memories were always, it was always pretty special. Thank you very much, mate, and I wish you all the very best. Thank you. Cheers, Thank mate. You. Did you enjoy that? There's so much more, so why not hit subscribe and download the Optus Sport app.